the level 1500 Ferengi prince smashed his fist into the level 1 human's face, blood spraying the pristine academy hallway. 16-year-old Tyler Evans, the only human student at the prestigious Celestial Heights Academy, crashed to the polished floor. Prince Craxon and his cronies howled with laughter, kicking Tyler as he struggled to rise. Pathetic primitive, you don't belong here among your superiors, Craxon sneered. His eyes glowed with malevolent power. Tyler spat blood and glared at the prince, fists clenched. But he kept his fury leashed. One wrong move and he'd be expelled, Earth's sole representative shamed before the snooty galactic elite. Tyler endured their cruelty every day, finding solace in diligent study of advanced engineering and theoretical physics. But the upcoming Cosmic Clash tournament changed everything. A chance to prove humanity's untapped potential, to crush Craxon and his petty tyranny. Tyler boldly entered, shocking the Academy. His classmates gaped in disbelief, convinced the human was marching to annihilation against the combat dynamo of Prince Craxon. Tyler just smiled, a dangerous glint in his eyes. He had a secret weapon, and Craxon was about to get the surprise of his spoiled royal life. In the days following the brutal attack, Tyler threw himself into a grueling training regimen with laser focus. He woke before the twin suns crested the horizon, strapping on the weighted harness gifted to him by Dr. Nakamura. Tyler ignored the pain of his healing injuries as he ran lap after lap around the academy grounds, sweat soaking his clothes. Between classes on warp theory and astroengineering, he sequestered himself in forgotten courtyards to practice ancient martial arts katas. Tyler lost himself in the fluid movements, imagining each precision strike landing on Craxon's smug face. During lectures, he studied combat vids of previous Cosmic Clash tournaments under his desk, analyzing the fighting styles of championship contenders. As artificial moonlight bathed the campus, Tyler worked into the night inside the engineering lab. Sleep became a forgotten luxury. He poured every scrap of mental energy into constructing a mysterious device, its purpose known only to him and Dr. Nakamura. You're pushing yourself too hard here the doctor warned over an encrypted holocall. Dark moons hung under the aging physicist's eyes. The human brain needs rest. I'll rest after I beat Craxon, Tyler said. What's the status on your end? Dr. Nakamura sighed but nodded. The package will arrive two rotations before the tournament. I pray it gives you the edge you need. Word of Tyler's manic training spread through the student body like a solar flare. Many doubted the human would actually go through with his insane plan to fight in the Cosmic Clash. They whispered that he was on a suicide mission. Prince Craxon and his hangers-on took sadistic pleasure in mocking the bleary-eyed human as he stumbled to classes. No amount of training can bridge the gap between my power level and your puny physiology, the Ferengi royalty scoffed. You're just embarrassing yourself, Earthling. But Tyler just smirked and kept his head down, not rising to their taunts. Let them underestimate him. He'd teach Craxon the folly of his arrogance in the arena. The prince tried to infiltrate the engineering lab to uncover what Tyler was building in secret. He sent his lackeys to poke around, confident the primitive Terran tech would be no match for their intrusion. They returned hours later, skin-dyed putrid shades of puce and puke green, voices squeaking like carnival clowns, Tyler had rigged the lab with cleverly concealed booby traps as a nasty surprise for any snoops. Craxon flew into an apoplectic rage at the sight of his humiliated minions, Tyler's laughter ringing in his ears. Two cycles before the tournament, an unmarked package arrived at Tyler's dorm. He tore it open in the privacy of his Spartan room. Inside lay a strange bodysuit, its material shimmering like oil under light. Tyler grinned as he read Dr. Nakamura's attached note, explaining the cutting-edge metamaterial woven into the fabric. He donned the suit and ran through a series of exercises, marveling at the speed and strength it lent his movements. Tyler felt like he could take on an army single-handedly. It's perfect, he messaged Dr. Nakamura. I can win with this. Remember, it has limits, the doctor cautioned, 
and it's your mind even more than the suit, that will be your greatest weapon. That night the small cadre of human students visited Tyler's room. They clapped him on the back and wished him luck, pride shining in their eyes. They knew the odds he faced, but win or lose, tomorrow Tyler would show the galaxy what humanity was made of. The morning of the cosmic clash dawned bright and electric with anticipation. Tyler woke before his alarm, his body humming with nervous energy. He dressed quickly and headed to the arena locker room, the metamaterial bodysuit from Dr. Nakamura concealed beneath his academy uniform. In the privacy of a stall, Tyler stripped off his uniform and donned the suit. The strange fabric slid over his skin like cool silk, molding to every contour of his toned physique. As the final seam sealed, the suit's circuitry came alive, interconnecting with Tyler's nervous system. He gasped as power surged through his muscles. He felt invincible, brimming with coiled strength waiting to be unleashed. Tyler stepped out onto the arena floor to a cacophony of cheers, boos and species-specific noises from the gathered crowd of students, faculty and visiting dignitaries. Craxon and his posse occupied front row seats. They pointed at Tyler and guffawed derisively, betting loudly on which of his bones would break first. What's the matter, Earthling? Craxon called. Scared speechless? Why don't you scurry on home before you get hurt? Tyler just smiled and cracked his knuckles. Talk is cheap, Craxon. I'll let my fists do the talking. The first few matches blurred together as Tyler's opponents hit the mat in quick succession. A hulking Cranax, scales glistening with sweat, lumbered towards him, only to find himself flipped head over heels by a move that should have been physically impossible for a human. A Zephyrian duelist zipped around Tyler in a lightning-fast blur, but he anticipated her vector, and clothes lined her to the ground. Horde silence descended on the arena, quickly replaced by thunderous applause, the human students leapt to their feet, stomping and chanting Tyler's name. He basked in their adulation, catching a glimpse of Craxon's slack-jawed incredulity. The Ferengi's complexion had turned a satisfying shade of puce. But Tyler's real test arrived in the semi-final round. His opponent was Nero, a lanky technomancer from the Kelos system. Nero was a living nightmare for any machine, able to hack and control technology with a mere thought. Fool! Nero sneered as the holographic starting flag blinked on. Your trinkets and gadgets are powerless against my gifts. He thrust a hand forward, fingers crackling with invasive energy. Tyler felt his suit go rigid as Nero tried to seize control. But the sensation passed a nanosecond later. Nero's eyes widened in shock. The suit's psionic shielding, based on Dr. Nakamura's groundbreaking Esper research, held fast against the mental assault. Don't possible, Nero sputtered. How can your primitive tech resist me? What trickery is this? Tyler grinned wolfishly. Buddy, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Then he blitzed forward, landing a supersonic punch to Nero's gut before the technomancer could react. Nero wheezed and stumbled back, Tyler hounding him with a relentless flurry of kicks and strikes. The Technomancer tried frantically to fend Tyler off with hurled objects and waves of force, but it was like trying to swat a hornet with a sledgehammer. Yelling with frustration, Nero threw everything he had into a massive telekinetic blast wave. The crowd gasped as the invisible wall of force rolled towards Tyler like a freight hover train. Tyler coiled his legs and sprang, rocketing over the blast by a hair's breadth. The world seemed to slow as he somersaulted through the air, Nero's astonished face rotating into view. Tyler talked his body and whipped his heel out in a picture-perfect crescent kick. The crack of Tyler's foot, connecting with Nero's jaw, echoed over the arena. The technomancer crumpled to the sand in a boneless heap, out cold before he even touched ground. Nero is unable to continue, the announcer Bart blared. Victory to the Terran underdog. Tyler thrust his fists in the air as the crowd erupted into hysterical cheers. Over the din, he heard the anguished wail of a certain Ferengi prince watching his champion fall. You're next, Craxon, Tyler muttered under his breath, and I'm coming for the gold. The crowd roared as Tyler and Craxon strode into the arena for the tournament finals.
the Ferengi prince strutted with the arrogant confidence of someone who had never tasted defeat. He sneered at Tyler, his power level of 1500 dwarfing the human's level one. Ready to be put in your place, monkey boy, Craxon taunted. Tyler just smiled and assumed a fighting stance, the metamaterial of Dr. Nakamura's suit glinting under the arena lights. Bring it on, your highness. The starting klaxon blared. Craxon immediately went on the offensive, hurling a barrage of crackling purple energy blasts at Tyler. The human ducked and wove between the deadly projectiles, his suit-enhanced reflexes rendering him a blur of motion. Craxon snarled and poured more power into his assault, but Tyler's speed and agility let him dodge every blast. Switching tactics, the Ferengi prince lunged forward to engage Tyler in close combat. His fists hammered at the human with pile driver force, each blow packing enough strength to pulverize stone. But Tyler's suit magnified his own strength to superhuman levels, allowing him to meet Craxon's attacks head on. They traded body blows and grappled furiously, neither giving an inch. Craxon's face purpled with frustration as he failed to overpower the Terran student. Spittle flew from his lips as he raged at Tyler. Filthy monkey! You sully this sacred tournament with your primitive presence. I'll not just defeat you, I'll make you beg for mercy before I snap your spine in half. Tyler's calm facade finally cracked at the prince's cruel words. Anger flashed in his eyes as he shot back. You're nothing but an overgrown bully, Craxon. A spoiled rich kid who hides his insecurities behind his power. You've never faced a real challenge in your coddled life. Purple veins throbbed in Craxon's forehead. He thrust his hands forward and began charging a seething ball of energy between his palms. The power pouring into it made the air ripple with distortion. It was clear he intended to vaporize Tyler with one massive blast. So let's see you dodge this ape. The Ferengi's eyes glowed with malevolent glee, but in his arrogance he failed to notice that Tyler had subtly maneuvered him into position. The human's hands hovered inches from Craxon's outstretched arms. Strange emitters built into the suit's gloves began to whine with an escalating pitch. Craxon fired his energy bomb point-blank, and in that same instant, Tyler activated his secret weapon. The entropy inverter, the product of countless late nights in the engineering lab, sprang to life. The device created a shimmering field that caught Craxon's blast and turned it back on him, magnifying its power tenfold. The Ferengi prince had just enough time for his eyes to widen in horrified realization before the redirected energy engulfed him. A blinding explosion rocked the arena, sending out a gale-force shockwave. The crowd threw up their hands against the glare. As the smoke slowly cleared, a lone figure became visible at the epicenter of a massive crater. Tyler stood tall, his suit glowing with discharged energy. Of Craxon there was no sign, until a faint groan drew Tyler's attention to a crumpled blue form lying at the crater's edge. The Ferengi twitched once and then lay still, his ornate robe scorched and shredded. A stunned silence hung over the crowd. Then a robotic voice boomed out from the judge's booth. Prince Craxon is unable to continue. The winner of the cosmic clash is Tyler Evans of Earth. Pandemonium erupted in the stands. The human students leapt up, screaming Tyler's name until they went hoarse. The small Earth delegation hugged each other, openly weeping with joy and pride. Tyler raised his fists in triumph, drinking in the moment. His gaze fell on Craxon's posse, their faces slack with disbelief. The sight was almost as sweet as the victory itself. The primitive Terran had shocked the galaxy, and no one would ever underestimate humanity again. Tyler stood atop the shoulders of his cheering classmates, their voices chanting his name in a deafening roar. Confetti rained down, catching in his hair. Hands reached up to clap him on the back or tug at his arms. You did it, Ty, Malik, his roommate, shouted over the din. You showed these stuck-up aliens what humans are made of. Even some of the non-human students who had previously ridiculed him now approached with grudging congratulations. A Zephyrian girl whose friends had laughed at Tyler's primitive background offered a tentative smile. Impressive moves out there, Earthling. I didn't think your species had it in you. 
Tyler grinned, too elated to take offence at the backhanded compliment. After all the mockery, the bullying, the condescension he had endured, this victory tasted as sweet as ambrosia. But his triumph was cut short by a gruff voice cutting through the celebration. Tyler Evans, come with us! Two burly Celestial Height security officers pushed their way through the crowd. Tyler's classmates set him back on his feet, confused. Malik frowned. What's this about? If this is about that scuffle with the Cranax last week, it wasn't Ty's fault. The guards ignored him, their stony faces fixed on Tyler. The headmaster wants to see you now. A knot of dread formed in Tyler's stomach as he followed them out of the arena. Whispers chased him as he left. In the headmaster's wood-panelled office, the elderly Zephyrian sat behind an enormous desk, his fingers steepled. He regarded Tyler gravely. Sit down, Mr. Evans. I'm afraid there's been a serious development. What's going on, sir? If this is about the fight, Craxon was the one who... The headmaster raised a liver-spotted hand, silencing him. Prince Craxon is dead, Tyler. He succumbed to his injuries from your match. The words hit Tyler like a sledgehammer. He gripped the arms of his chair, head spinning. What? No, that can't be. I didn't hit him that hard. I was just trying to win the tournament. The Ferengi king is demanding your extradition, the headmaster said heavily. He wants you tried on his homeworld for murder. Murder? Tyler felt bile rise in his throat. But it was an accident. Craxon was a bully. He was coming at me with everything he had. The headmaster's eyes narrowed. Be that as it may, bullying is not a capital crime, and your use of that entropy inverter suggests premeditated lethal force. There will be a full investigation, but as of now you are expelled from this institution. The world seemed to tilt under Tyler's feet. This couldn't be happening, not when he had worked so hard, sacrificed so much. Angry voices sounded from outside the office, the Earth delegation. Tyler heard snatches of heated argument. Tyler clearly self-defense. The Ferengi prince was far stronger. Your student used an illegal weapon. There must be consequences. Uh, we'll impose sanctions on Earth unless the human is extradited. After several minutes, the voices fell silent. The door opened and Earth's ambassador entered, his face pale and drawn. I'm so sorry, Tyler. The galactic community is demanding your surrender. We have no choice but to hand you over or risk Earth standing. Tyler shook his head in mute denial as Ferengi guards strode in. They snapped a pair of energy cuffs around his wrists. The restraints hummed and glowed, cancelling his suit's enhancements. As they led him out of the academy, Tyler saw his classmates, his friends, staging an impromptu protest. They linked arms and chanted his name, but their defiance withered under a stern look from the guards. Tyler gave Malik and the others a sad smile as he shuffled past in his shackles. A year ago he would have been enraged, defiant. He would have raged against the unfairness of it all. But now he just felt a bone-deep weariness. He had fought so hard, and for what? To be condemned as a murderer for defending himself? As a final insult, Tyler overheard a group of alien students snickering as he was led to a waiting patrol ship. Thy knew that monkey couldn't have beat Craxon fairly, had to resort to treachery and foul play. Forget expelled. That primitive savage should be spaced for what he did. He'll get what he deserves from Ferengi justice. Hot tears pricked at Tyler's eyes as the hatch sealed shut with a hiss of compressed air. The ship lifted off, carrying him away from everything he had strived for. Away from a future that had, for one shining moment, seemed so bright. A year later, that future was a distant memory. Tyler huddled in the corner of a fetid cell deep in the bowels of a Ferengi prison moon. His once robust body was emaciated, his skin sallow from too many beatings and not enough nutrition. The guards, disgusted by the presence of a primitive amongst them, went out of their way to torment him. His fellow inmates, hardened Ferengi criminals, saw him as a plaything to be brutalized for their amusement. The creak of a rusted slot made him flinch, but instead of the expected tray of gelatinous gruel, 
a sealed envelope dropped to the damp floor. Tyler snatched it up with trembling hands. He recognized the precise handwriting. Dr. Nakamura. The aging physicist was the only one who still wrote to him, still believed in him. Tyler's family couldn't bear the shame of having a convicted killer as a son. His friends had gradually stopped communicating, moving on with their lives while his withered away. But Dr. Nakamura's letters were a lifeline, a reminder that someone, at least, remembered the eager young student he had once been. Tyler tore open the envelope and read the words hungrily. Say as the subspace anomaly we discussed continues to emit fascinating quantum fluctuations, I believe it may hold the key to breaching dimensional barriers. If my theories are correct, it could be your ticket to freedom. Don't give up hope, Tyler. You were meant for greater things than a prison cell. Tyler clutched the letter to his chest as silent sobs racked his thin frame. Tears splashed on the wrinkled paper, blurring the ink. The taste of his glorious victory had long since turned to ashes in his mouth. But even here, in the depths of his despair, a faint ember of hope yet burned. The dream of a brown-eyed boy who once dared to reach beyond the confines of his humble origins to challenge the scions of a vast and ancient galaxy. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.